Let's take a look at trigonometry and the tangent ratio. More specifically, let's look at calculating angles. To start with, we need a triangle. Now the trigonometry we're going to be working with is going to involve a right triangle. Without a right triangle, the methods I'm showing you right now won't work. Now we also need to be able to label the sides of this triangle. The longest side on a right triangle is always the hypotenuse. We'll call that height for short. A good way to remember which one is the hypotenuse is we can look at this right angle always points at it. Now to label the next two sides, we actually need to look from a specific corner because all depending which corner you look from, they're going to have different names. So let's start, let's look from this corner right here. I'm going to call that theta. Theta is a Greek letter. We use it as a variable that refers to an angle. Now that we know what angle we're looking from, we can start to label our sides. On the far side of the triangle from the angle, from the angle we're looking from, is the opposite side. We can use OPP for short. And then beside the angle, we have the adjacent. Adjacent is another word for beside. We'll call this one ADJ for short. Now the reason why I said it matters which angle we're looking from is because if we look from the other angle, the opposite and adjacent sides would change. So let's redo this piece, and instead, let's look from that angle. From the angle that we're looking from now, which is up here, the opposite side is down here, and the adjacent side is right here. Because we're looking from a different angle, the far side of the triangle is in a different spot. The next piece we want to look at is what is the tangent ratio? Now let's put down the formula for the tangent ratio first, and then we'll talk about what exactly it is. The tangent ratio is a ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Or if we write it in the short form, we would say tan of angle theta equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now a couple things about what this is. It is only a ratio of those sides. And we know that for any given angle, let's say for a 25 degree angle, the opposite and adjacent sides on a right triangle will always be the same ratio. Keep in mind also that a tan on its own is not a thing. Tangent is something you apply to an angle. It is an operation, a function you apply to the angle to get a specific ratio. What I need you to realize is that tan is not a thing on its own. Tan is a function where you take a look at what is the ratio of the opposite to adjacent side on for any given angle. So you do a tan of an angle to get something, but you don't have a tan all by itself. Let's go finding the tangent ratios of a specific angle. I've got two questions here. I want to know what the tangent ratio of angle X is, and I want to know what the tangent ratio of angle Z is. I'm going to start by writing down my formula. Always start by writing your formula down. And it is tan of theta equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. We're going to use that over and over again. So let's start with what is the tangent ratio of x? Well, in order to do that, I need to look from that angle. So this is the angle I'm looking from, right there. Label my sides. That's my hypotenuse. Even though I'm not really using it for this question, I'm writing it in anyways. So the far side of the triangle is the 6 millimeter side. That makes it the opposite side. And right beside my angle, and not the hypotenuse, this 12 millimeter side is the adjacent side. So if tan of x is opposite over adjacent, then tan of x is 6 millimeters, because that's my opposite side, divided by 12 millimeters. 6 divided by 12, the tangent ratio of angle x is going to be 0 0.5. A tangent ratio doesn't have any units, so you have to keep be careful. When you're doing these calculations, your sides have to be in the same units. Because if I look at this, millimeters and millimeters will cancel each other out, because there's millimeters on the top and millimeters on the bottom. Let's move on to find the tan of angle z. Because we're now looking from a different angle, my side names are going to change. Hypotenuse doesn't change, but the other two do. So now I'm looking from this angle. So if I'm from if I'm looking from right here, the opposite side is now going to be this 12 millimeter side. 
and the adjacent side is going to be the 6 millimeter side. So just like before, tan of Z is opposite over adjacent. So tan of Z should be 12 millimeters divided by 6 millimeters. Tan of Z, 12 divided by 6, is going to be 2. There are my two answers. Okay, the tangent ratio alone really isn't a lot of good for to us. What we use it for is we use it to find angle sizes and side lengths. It's just a tool to get to where we need to go. And in this case, we're going to find the measures of these of the angles and we're going to use that tangent ratio. Let's start with angle K. This is the angle I'm looking from. I need to label my sides. Opposite the right angle is always the hypotenuse. On the far side from the angle we're looking at is the opposite side. And the one right beside the angle that's not the hypotenuse, that's my adjacent side. Don't forget our formula. Tan of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And you should write that down every time you do one of these questions. Let's find angle K. So tan of angle K equals my opposite side is 9 millimeters. My adjacent side is 13 millimeters. The tangent ratio of k equals 9 divided by 13. Let's bring up a calculator here. And 9 divided by 13. Oh, there's a lot of decimal places there. Let's just take the first tan of k equals 0 0.6923. As I said before, that doesn't help us yet, but it's going to get us there. What we have are trigonometric tables that look like this. It lists all the degrees and what the sine, the cosine, and the tangent ratios are for those degrees. Don't worry about the sine and the cosine just yet. So what I could do is I could look, I could scroll down. I am looking for 0.6923 and I'm looking for the one that is the closest to it. If I look right here, this one right here is really close and that one's even closer. So if I'm looking on a tan table, my angle is going to be just a hair under 35 degrees. Now we're not going to go back to the, the tan the trigonometric tables every time we want to look this up. Luckily, our calculators have this built in and built into a lot more accuracy. So let's go back to the calculator and use that same thing. So I'm going to use my calculator to look that up. I still got my number there. Now I'm working backwards. I know the ratio and I want to work backwards to find the angle, just like, like I did on that table. I'm going to click on my trigonometric function. I want to hit second function. On some calculator, it's going to be shift. And so I'm going to use this tan to the minus one. That's the inverse of tan. And I've got 34.6951 degrees. What I can write now is angle K equals 34.6951 degrees. That's more decimal places than we really need. Usually, rounded off to the nearest degree is going to be close enough. Angle K equals 35 degrees. Let's do that one more time. Let's do angle N. Now, because we're working with a different angle, we're no longer working from this K corner. I'm going to be working from this N corner. What that means is the labels on my sides are going to change because opposite angle N is this 13 millimeter side. So let's just erase this piece. This is now my opposite side. This is now my adjacent side. So I can go the tangent ratio of angle N equals my opposite side is 13 millimeters and my adjacent side is 9 millimeters. Tan of N equals, pull out my calculator, I'm going to clear this old one off, 13 divided by 9 equals 1.4 repeated. Trigonometry, I'm going to go second function tan, and there we go. 55.3 degrees. Round it off to the nearest degree, and I've got angle N equals 55 degrees. And there I've used the tangent ratio to help me find the angles from a triangle.